This show is brought to you by these happy patrons. Hey there, you beautiful people in lockdown. Welcome to the BNPR show. We have a special show for you this time. In this show, we will discuss how to start up your NPR journey on very little money and effort. Then, we will see the jaw-dropping things the stylized community has been doing in the past month. Around various places on the internet, 3D CG is advertised as follows. High quality GI, high poly count ZBrush meshes, movie quality VFX with dust, smoke, and explosions. Well, these are all made on expensive power gulping computers, often taking a team of seasoned artists to produce. They cost a lot and take a long time to make. So for us NPR enthusiasts, 3D CG starts much simpler and with a much lower hardware requirement. Even a potato PC can make great NPR artworks. There is a saying in the NPR community, it goes something like this, the style follows the intention. There are two parts here. First, the style. This is the final result and may not be what is behind the scene. Second, the intention. This is the driving force to produce the style, and both of them come together from different sources. But we'll just stop at that and leave the discussion for a later date. The goal this time is how to start the NPR journey on very little budget and still producing great artworks, games, and movies. So let's start with hardware requirements. If you go to this page on blender.org, you'll see that Blender only requires a 64-bit dual-core 2 GHz CPU with SSE2 support, 4 GB of RAM, 1280 x 768 pixel display, and a graphics card with 1 GB of RAM with OpenGL 3.3 support. This is pretty much any refurbished computer out there at this time, but you may want to upgrade these things. Increase the RAM to at least 8 GB and try to get DDR4 RAM. It should be faster, but it depends on if the hardware can accept the faster RAM. Try a full HD display, 1920 by 1080, so that you don't have to struggle with Blender's UI. Find a graphics card with at least two gigabytes of VRAM and with support for OpenGL 3.3. Usually these things are very inexpensive. Upgrade the storage to a solid state drive. This will make your PC more responsive in general. Get a good keyboard with a number pad and a good mouse. If your current PC has these specs, you're good to go for NPR. Now that you have a PC and Blender running, what do you do? Since you have a small VRAM, you should avoid a couple of things. The first thing is to avoid modeling with high polygon count. High polygon count is relative, but for your hardware, keep all your models below 2000 faces each. If your GPU can only draw 2 million faces, with 2,000 face objects, you can have a thousand of those objects in a scene before you hit the hardware limit. And a thousand objects are a lot. Further side note on that, do not use subdivision surface modifiers or dynamic topology on your mesh. Those can exponentially increase the polygon count without you knowing. The second thing to avoid is high resolution textures. Any texture that is over 2,048 pixels squared are considered high resolution. They will eat up your VRAM very fast. For gradient textures, do not go too low res either though. Keep it at least 256 pixels squared. For the ultra elite folks, the best texture is no texture. It forces them to model the mesh very carefully to get the best topology, and then apply the vertex color as the texture. Going low poly doesn't mean every character is a voxel Minecraft character. That is kind of for the super beginners, and I think most of us can do much better. There is a fun Twitter tag lately that fits starting NPR on a budget, hashtag 256FES. This modeling challenge was initiated by at FeelZenVR with no deadline. The challenge is to model anything with the budget of 256 faces or triangles. If you want to limit yourself further, try using only 256 pixel squared textures also. And the results, they're quite beautiful. Many model types in various styles in different mesh topologies with interesting colors. Now feast your eyes at these low poly count artworks. By participating in the 256 FES challenge, you'll learn these things. 
master the modeling tools, optimizing models for various shapes, learn how to UV unwrap, making low res textures, playing with simple NPR shaders, rigging, optimizing the mesh for animation, weight painting, and you'll come up with cool designs. Best of all, you get to finish your models very quickly. Quick results mean higher motivation. And here's a surprise. Since you made the models low poly, you can use them in games on any platform. If you're dreaming of making an RPG, you're ready. If you want to make an RTS, the poly count will not kill your PC. And since you made these models stylized, what you do with them will have a unique identity. You can also turn them into pixel art. You can of course refer to show number 15 on how to do that. Another example is the latest video from Dillian Gu's YouTube channel. In this example, the animation was animated by Shane Newville. If you made a good enough character rig, even with the lowest quality graphics, you can still make an epic animation. So what we're saying here is poly count, global illumination, high resolution textures are not what make your artworks epic. What makes your artwork epic is the coherent style, a good story, and a few well-executed technical plans. So now go out there and show what you can do with limited hardware. We'd love to see how you progress and grow. Speaking of cool artworks, how about we explore the cool artworks from the community? This character render, Suzuhana by at Mukumi, looks like a 2D render when static like this. Then it turns. So what makes it feel 2D? First, the character design is full of 2D designs. Second, the texture is painted to have a detailed density fitting for the screen space viewing. Third, it has a limited palette with a crushed down value range and limited saturation. Combine these, and you have a perfect 3D model, which looks like a 2D render. Nice job! Demo 2 concept video by Rayarch Inc. This is a concept trailer for Demo 2, the game. The short plot is, alone in the castle, a figure plays on the piano. Demo. One day, a girl falls from the sky. A castle littered with mysterious inhabitants. A sacred tree growing by the melody of the piano a girl with no memory, and Demo. A gentle story that will touch your heart. This animation is a mixture of 2D in 3D. When the camera circles the character, that reveals the character is actually 3D with a paint over on the line art and some of the surfaces. Plus the color grading makes the animation look superb. There will be a Demo movie soon as well. The famous studio, Production IG, is involved. So be eager to watch the final movie, and be prepared to cry. 
Hooray! is made by a team formed about three years ago. They consist of at poprec, at ohaji kiko, and at haruno underscore 168, with the music production by at 666 underscore illumi. The storyboard is done with grease pencil in Blender. Grease pencil is also used to add 2D quality expressions. The result is insanely great. But not all the expressions are done using grease pencil. For efficiency, some mouth shapes for doing some angles are a 3D mesh. The mixture of 3D and 2D makes this animation feel authentic. Good job! Otherworldly System is the latest creation by Gensho Yasuda. The main character was transported into another world and met a few interesting characters. For the rest of the plot, please watch the full trailer animation. For a one-man animation in Blender, this is a great work. You may know by now that if you stick to the end of the show, you get to see the question of the month. And you might be able to answer it, so please stay around for a bit. Please subscribe if you have not, and you can find us in these places as well. We have even more NPR goodness than we can fit into the show. The tutorials missing in this show are in the show notes, so check out the notes for that. These are the awesome people keeping the show running for everyone. Please thank them kindly. And before we go, the one last question. What old low poly games do you love? And that's a wrap. Please stay safe, everyone.